I'm going to make this uh, video short and sweet, basically to avoid dragging it out. Nidhogg is among the most mysterious names in Norse mythology. Scholar Rudolf Simic translates his name as the one striking full of hatred, and every passage of him invokes a sense of cosmic horror. Even though little is known about him, it is worth exploring what little we have. Nidhogg is said to be a great dragon, or cosmic serpent, resting at the base of Yggdrasil. These passages recorded by Snorri mention the suffering endured by Yggdrasil as stags eat at its leaves and Nidhogg eats away at it from below. And at the top of Yggdrasil sits a mighty eagle with a hawk sitting between its eyes. This hawk is only mentioned by Snorri and its name, Vedderfolnir, means storm pale, as in pale, not bucket. But anyway... The eagle, however, remains unnamed, and unfortunately the meaning of the eagle and hawk have been lost to time. We do understand, however, that Nidhogg and the eagle seem to be intelligent forces as they send malicious messages back and forth to one another, carried by the tenacious Ratatosk, a squirrel running up and down the length of the tree. And the squirrel is used by these two great powers who, for whatever reason, wish to express their anger toward one another, without moving from their places on the Idrisil. My personal headcanon for Ratatosk is that he's a little forgetful and that the messages between the eagle and Nidhogg are actually compliments and they're trying to work out the issues between one another, but Ratatosk and his squirrel brain keep screwing it up and delivering gross misinterpretations of their words that come off as insults. And they are constantly trying to de-escalate and sending ni nice messages back and forth, but to no avail as Ratatosk keeps getting distracted and he doesn't write anything down because he figured he'd remember it. Someone's going to get mad at me for that, but probably not as mad as they will be about this merch drop. <laughs> I have no idea how to do like a product insert or whatever, but I do have a red bubble and we did just create some new designs for it for the spooky season. So feel free to check it out in the uh, link below. Something that could be described as chewing on the roots of Idrasil, the world tree, the base of all existence, invokes an image of a being so incomprehensibly large that it inspires an awe on a scale of cosmic horror. Something that even trying to imagine might put you in an existential whirlwind. Snorri's comments on him seem to suggest that there's an association between him and the afterlife. And this offers us an interesting window into what Nidhogg may represent. The multiplicity of afterlives is something that has been talked about at great length on this channel, and Nidhogg gives us a glimpse into what may be a Norse punishment afterlife of sorts. Among the other worlds described by Saxo and Snorri is a place that Snorri calls Nastrond, and Snorri's description of that is a place with walls woven out of snakes' bodies and rivers of poison coming from the snakes spitting into the hall. It's a... It's a real vibe. Uh, Saxo discusses a similar hold, which contains a bound Utgard Loki, and a group of adventurers sail there and find the bound Jotun and collect a strand of hair from his chin. And immediately after doing so, a mighty stench fills the hold, and snakes fly from the walls and spit poisons onto the invaders, killing all but five of them. There is no mention of Nidhogg in Saxo's writings, but it's possible that these adventurers may have visited the hold which might be associated with Nidhogg. Snorri writes that Nidhogg is not the only one at the base of Idrasil, and that there are many other serpents so numerous that they cannot be named, inspiring an image of Nidhogg's realm as being one overflowing with serpent dragons not dissimilar from himself. Snorri, however, does not associate Nidhogg with Nastrond, but with another place called Virgulmir. Virgulmir is attested to in the Poetic Edda as the place from which all waters rise. Snorri describes it as a spring in Niflheim, at the base of Idrasil, in which resides Nidhogg, along with many other serpents. The Voluspa in the Poetic Edda refers to Nidhogg as sucking on the corpses of the dead, that of oathbreakers, murderers, and seducers. And Snorri describes Nastron, but then says in Virgulmir, it is worse, for there Nidhogg torments the souls of the dead. So we are given an image of a spring of rising water deep within the land of ice, teeming with hateful serpent dragons, and prime among them is mighty Nidhogg. 
Perhaps Nidhug and his brethren feed on the souls of the dead who brought about incredible harm throughout their life, which I guess would make them worm food. This vague window into a punishment afterlife of sorts doesn't really give us much of a picture. The passages describing them are very short, and they only give us hints of what complex beliefs and myths that may be getting referenced here. There is also the issue to note of Christian influence in these beliefs. Certainly conceptions of the afterlife had major influence from Christianity, especially later on. So when we hear depictions that sound much like Christian conceptions of the afterlife, such as Sindri's Hall for the Virtuous or Nidhogg's Torturous Realm, we should perhaps take the picture presented to us with a grain of salt. Something interesting is that Nastrond is described as a punishment afterlife, and then Virgilmir is described as another distinct punishment afterlife on which Nidhogg feeds on corpses. Something to consider may be the parts of the soul. Perhaps Nidhogg was seen as that which decays the lick, the body, and that his realm is simply part of the cycle of life. But his name, one who strikes with hatred, gives me pause on such an idea. His name alone lends credence to Snorri's depiction of him as a torturer of some kind. This is made all the more frustrating by the tiny amount of information that we're presented with anyway. The image that we have is likely based on something from Germanic myth, and we have some pictures of what may have inspired these images from Saxo's description of a haunting realm covered in snakes, which may just be Nastrond. It's hard to date the conception of Nidhogg. Mention of him is sparse and late. Art related to him seems to be non-existent, which may have been out of fear. Icons of reverence made for a torturous eldritch death dragon seem like something that not many would want to possess. Except if such a thing existed, I would totally want to get my hands on it. So, whatever pre-Christian legends that may have included Nidhogg, whatever his early mythic purpose may have been, has been lost to time. We do, however, see a final image of him in the Voluspa as Ragnarok comes to a close. Nidhogg leaves his dark abode with corpses dropping from his wings, and it seems reasonable to hold that even if Nidhogg was placed in these roles with influence from Christianity, that there's good reason for the inspiration. Nidhogg seems to be associated with death, hatred, and his character seems fitting to place him in the final role of the Apocalypse. I will say, however, he is the coolest kaiju in Norse mythology. Perfect goth vibes, no notes. But with that, hail to my patrons for making this content possible. It's good to have people at your back. The like button and subscribe button are having their souls slowly sucked out by Nidhug, and there's really nothing that can be done about it. Clicking the like button appeases the algorithm gods, and ring the bell if you want to be kept posted for more heathen content. And remember to find a way or make one. Question for the comments section. If Nidhogg feeds on the souls sent to him in the afterlife, would Nidhogg count as a vampire? <laughs>